All right, thought I'd go over my cold weather camping and some lies and myths, some truths about camping. When you do a lot of camping, you start figuring this stuff out quick. So maybe I could save somebody some time and pain and aggravation. So first off, this is my uh, system here, minus a cot. Uh, if you're going to sleep warm, you got to be off the ground. So I usually have either a cot or um, at minimum an air mattress which those aren't the best this is my tent for uh, family it's a uh, so the first myth I'm gonna go over or lie is that you need to take whatever capacity it says and put it in half because ten people don't sleep comfortably like that okay now um, that's important because if you're trying to put 10 people in a tent and thinking that you're going to have a happy camping trip like these people, they lied to you. So half it, uh, me and my wife, three kids uh, can sleep in this tent and barely have enough room for all of our stuff. Um, because when you actually use things to sleep off of the ground, you don't actually have the ability to sleep like that. All right, now um, another lie or myth is with sleeping bags. Uh, they have a, a temperature rating, and that's a survival rating, not necessarily a comfort rating, okay? And so this, however, <laughs> far exceeds the temperature rating because it's a queen-size sleeping bag Tayton makes. And uh, one of the things I'd encourage people is know what temperature you're going to be camping at because you can actually go a little overboard and not be comfortable if you're too hot. You start sweating, you get colder that way than anything. But uh, it's no fun to be sweating the whole time when you're in your bag. Um, so actually, this uh, mammoth size sleeping bag does have a temperature rating of zero. That is actually spot on, but most sleeping bags... Add 20 to 30 degrees for a comfort rating because that's what you're going to want to use. I've seen people on so many different campouts go to get the big five $30 special and they say, well, it says it was rated for 30 degrees. I should be fine. No, dude, you might not be dead if you're lucky, but you definitely won't be comfortable that night. And you're going to learn the next day when you go into town and buy a more expensive sleeping bag. So, all right, now getting into a couple other things that are really, uh, I think, Important when talking about cold weather camping is your comfort on using a heater or not. Um, Mr. Heater obviously is the big one. And so I'm just going to show here what I started with is the small guy. And, uh, you know, I mean, you just use these one-gallon tanks right here. All right. And the problem that I have with this small guy is it really isn't useful for anything. So if you're looking at buying it, don't. Okay. Now I do have uh, the bigger guy right here. And uh, depending on your intended camping use, this thing pumps out solid heat. We'll get to it in a sec. The little guy, uh, even with the little stand that you can buy with the legs that come out, uh, it's really awkward and it's top heavy. So it falls over even in a slight wind when it's inside of your tent. The second part is remember how I said half this. So a lot of people in a four-person tent, you're only sleeping two people, and you don't have a lot of space. So this heater can get really close to people um, because you just don't have anywhere else to put it. Um, whereas in a bigger tent, this is worthless too in, in the bigger family tent because uh, it doesn't pump out enough heat. So now I'm just holding on to it as a backup emergency heater. Um, and then outdoor, it's okay outside of the tent. Guys, public service announcement, please listen to me on this. Spend money on these heaters. Don't get the cheap heaters that don't have a regulator for oxygen. Um, because what you're going to do is die in your tent. Um, these have a shutoff when there's no oxygen available or when the carbon monoxide builds up. And it'll actually turn off. Uh, the second thing it'll do is regulate if it falls over. It won't stay lit. It'll immediately turn off. So it'll be sitting up. It'll fall over like this. And it'll just click right off. Now, this bad boy is worth every penny. And uh, it's got a few different settings there. Even on the low fan. So this actually takes two, two of the pound 
propane tanks and then back in here you have I think they're D batteries let me see yeah I think there's like four in there but basically you operate a fan that way and so not only do you have the two ceramic plates heating up just unbelievably but then you have a fan that pushes the heat into the rest of the tent so um this bad boy again you kind of got to decide if you're going to really take it it does weigh a little bit and it takes up some space but um overall if it's going to be 40 or below i'm usually taking this with me again great for the family tent um one other thing i want to talk about uh in terms of these uh, pound propane tanks, they get more expensive every freaking year. And so a buddy of mine a few years back got this uh, attachment that you can put onto a regular propane tank right there. And uh, you can actually refill these for pennies on the dollar. Uh, so keep your empties. And then there's actually a whole process for... How you do this, uh, when you order them online, they come with like a card. Let me see if I can. But basically you freeze them for like 30 minutes, turn them upside down, and then it fills up. Your uh, other tank that you're filling from has to be uh, full for it to work right. But this is kind of my setup for when it's really going to get cold out. How we have a really good time when we're camping and it hits in the 20s or the 10s, we're still fine. And again, the only thing not shown is the cot that I usually use. I just didn't want to grab it out from where it was, but uh, everything else is extra. Everything else is just for comfort, so I didn't show it, but this is the bare necessities. If you have any questions, especially if you're looking at these Mr. Heaters or the Buddies, let me know.